definitely broke uh, inside this compressor. Could be a broken valve or maybe a rod, but it's not pumping it. Sounds doesn't sound good. part is getting up your lift, your hoist, and setting it up and then the rest is a breeze. Alright, got the lift or the hoist set up. Compressor out. I uh, I usually unsweat uh, the lines from the compressor, but when I took off my hose when I started to recover, there's some oil coming out, so I just opted to cut it. And it looks like there is a oil just sitting in there, so I don't know. We'll see. Maybe the discharge line broke inside or something, but we'll see. I'll cut it open. All right, we're at 390, about to do a decay test. And I just have to wire it up, and uh, we're gonna use some 407C. Since the uh, compressor is charged with PO oil, the filter dryer is back behind the compressor. Probably start off with seven pounds and see where we're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had a lot of people ask me how I add refrigerant. After uh, pulling a vacuum, zoom up to that. Alright, so basically what I do is I close off the valves that are already closed, take off the high side, make sure your valve's closed. You're gonna purge your hose a little bit, screw it on a little bit. Purge it and then tighten it up. And then I zero the scale and then I go ahead and start charging. I'll put about a pound in and then I'll take off my uh, 
support tools and my uh, micron gauge. So yeah, any moisture that does get trapped, maybe a molecule or two, it'll get, uh, the dryer should take care of it. Here's the compressor that was uh, running but not pumping. Just took off the plug. See the. I don't know if you can see, see the windings. Looks like it's got uh, these two are suction. Here's your discharge. I need a flashlight. if I can turn on the right there the discharge line broke right off right there that's why I had a bunch of oil in the discharge uh, line I'm gonna see if something else broke but yeah I think that's why I was rattling because that, that line broke right there that's why I wasn't it was pumping, but it was just pumping inside the compressor. I'm trying to get the motor out to see if there's any other damage or what caused the discharge line to break. I'm gonna have to take this uh, the discharge line right here so I can pull it out because it loops underneath one of the springs or one of the mounts for the springs. Well, that's why it was uh, rattling and not pumping that line broke off right from right here this I cut this side to get it out because it loops around the bottom of the, the compressor mount but the mounts look fine I was hoping for some carnage but compressor looks fine copper plating or anything like that so so it was pumping but it was just pumping inside the shell so it's a pretty big motor there's the head your uh, discharge muffler your pressure relief valve these are your two suction lines it draws gas through them over from around the motor down and into the, the head. I'll take it apart. But yeah, everything looks good except for that discharge line. Here's your shot. As you can see, I take a few compressors apart just to see what's see why they failed. Alright, I'm gonna go. There are a few of the parts. I'm not really sure what this is for. It's just like a there's a clip. And these two plastic pieces. And there's a the holes on either side. If I can right there. It's kind of strange, but I really gotta take off the the head of the compressor. One-handed, but let's see. 
Here's uh, this is the valve plate. Here's your gasket. Your uh, let's see if I can take this off. Let's see your valve plate. I might have to. Let me see if I can get it off real quick. But here's your. Uh, the loads in there. Discharge is right in the middle. Your suction is on the outside. The outside is your uh, suction valve, reed valve, and the middle is your discharge. Let me see if I can take this off. Real quick. All right. Here's the valve plate. Here's your uh, this round. Uh, piece is your suction valve and then in the <coughs> right here where my fingers at that's your discharge looks like there's a little huh there is a little damage to the top of the piston let me see if I can the motor to get it up there. Hmm. Looks like there's a little chunk missing right there of the piston. You can actually see right there on the valve. Take off the end bearing housing. It's a bearing surface. It's little pieces of copper. And probably parts of the compressor. But trying to turn it, but it's kind of slippery. Let's get my glove. Something to turn it, but it's not frozen. I just can't get a good grip on it. But something took out a little piece of this compressor. I mean, the piston. Here's the suction valve. Still trying to figure out what happened there. Alright, here's a little bit better view. Here's uh, the overloads in here. Here's the motor. I guess the uh, stator. Um, suction gas. It's kind of hard to see. Right there. Comes around the, the vapor, goes around the motor, goes down here into these two intakes. If you can see. I'll take a picture of it, but anyways, goes down to the outside of the head and then into the this valve plate, into the valve reed. Whenever the compressor goes down and then when it goes up, it gets discharged up through here through the muffler, through the discharge line, wraps around the bottom of the uh, compressor, kind of heats up the oil too, as it's running. And that's it. I don't know what caused the discharge line to break, but you can see that piece right there, a little piece of that uh, piston, but nothing stuck, everything spins freely. So even if um, that wasn't broken, I'd 
probably would still see some some type of issue with it not pumping correctly because of this suction valve would always uh, leak by. A chunk of the discharge valve broke off and it broke the valve in two pieces. Uh, the suction valve, I mean, the discharge valves are good. I and mean, this, this valve is good too. So, I don't know. It bent up pretty good too. Probably a slug of liquid. <laughs> 